Should you buy the new M2 MacBook Air or should you save a ton of money and go for the M1 instead? Well, today we will find out because we are gonna be comparing everything with these laptops from the design to the displays, the webcams, the speakers. We're gonna be skipping on some of our normal benchmarks because people who buy these machines, they're usually doing some lighter tasks and focusing on how these devices compare in the real world. Now, before I jump in, I wanna let you know that we are giving away a brand new M2 MacBook Air, and I don't care where you are in the world, I will pay for the shipping, any taxes or import fees, and we're gonna give one of these to you guys. All you have to do is one, be subscribed to the channel, and two, comment on these launch week videos, starting out with the one that came out on Friday. You can comment once per video, and then on Monday, July 25th, we we will be choosing a winner in one of our videos, so make sure you guys don't miss that. Now, right away, I wanna say that I absolutely love the previous M1 MacBook Air. I love the design, I love the performance, I love the price. We highly, highly recommend this machine to so many people, specifically the base model. With the M2, I mean, this is a beautiful upgrade. First off, I love this color. Yes, you do get fingerprints on it, and that kinda sucks. And yes, you might be able to have some more chipping or more noticeable chipping because of this dark color, but it is gorgeous. As far as the footprint, it is very similar, but the M2 is actually slightly larger in footprint. But with that, we have a reduction of about 20% in volume. Now this thing is extremely thin overall, and you guys see that it is a slate design, whereas the M1 version has that iconic wedge shape that a lot of us love. Now on the back, it is definitely thicker than the M2 MacBook Air, but on the front, it does seem quite a bit thinner just because of how the bottom kind of curves in and it gives you this illusion of thinness. You guys let me know which design you prefer down in the comment section below. The M2 also weighs less than the M1, even though it has larger batteries inside. It has a very clean new layout that they did with some nice upgrade options to repairability, which is really cool to see in our teardown video. Now, we also did the thermal fix video where we helped the performance of this, but we did take those pads out just to make it a fair comparison because most people won't be doing that. Now, one of my favorite favorite things about the M2 version of the MacBook Air is MagSafe. You get this nice braided high quality cable and you get that classic automatic connection right there which just snaps in, the magnets are strong, you get the LED notification that it's charging and then of course you get full access to both of those Thunderbolt ports whereas with the M1 version if you're in charging you only have one unless you buy additional dongles or docks. I also really appreciate that the M2 has fast charging where it can reach 50% in just 30 minutes with one of the 67 watt power adapters. Now that is a really nice thing to have if you don't have it charged up and you need to go. Now with that on the other side, both of them have your headphone jack, but the M2 can support high impedance headphones. So if you do have a set that is nicer, that needs a little bit more juice, it can provide that. Opening these up, what I really miss is that MacBook Air logo on the old one. I think it'd be nice to have it here, but the new one has a clean, modern design. Both these do have Touch ID to log in, but the M2 has that larger one, along with full-size function keys. As far as the keyboards, the new one seems to have slightly less key travel, maybe because it's thinner, but with that, the keys are a little bit more springy, slightly louder, and it gives a little bit more feedback compared to the M1 MacBook Air, which has more travel, but it's slightly mushier. But of course, either way, everybody will be happy with these. And with that, the track pads are both awesome, the best in the industry. And now for the moment that I've been waiting for, the speakers. Our M1 MacBook Air has these grills on the side and we have stereo speakers, whereas on the M2, those grills are missing. The speakers are actually built in at the top inside and we have a few vents here when you open it up where the sound can bounce up at and off of the screen towards you, which is pretty cool. And they're also quad speakers with dedicated uh, speakers for the lower end. So now now let's go ahead and take a listen. Oh, 
of the things that we do for thinness, or at least that Apple does. We were really surprised by the findings here. Now, one thing, you guys heard the difference through a mono mic, through YouTube, so you guys let me know what differences you heard, but here, it was pretty substantial. Now, the first thing that stood out is the fact that it is quieter. It actually peaked at 80 decibels one time, but it averaged 77 to 78, whereas the M1 version, it peaked at 80 many times, and it would go to 78 and actually just sitting at 79. So it is one to two decibels louder. Now the next thing was how wide the sound was. Here with the speakers on the sides, it felt like the sound was kind of more all around me, where here with the M2 is very noticeable that the sound is coming from the screen, the speakers are closer together and it's coming from one source. It did not sound as nice. The highs are a little bit more muted and as far as bass, it is a little bit better, but a very small difference. So if I had to choose, I would go with the speakers on the M1 MacBook Air. And that is weird to say. Now, as far as the webcams and microphones, the M1 uses the older 720p webcam and the non-studio microphones. The M2 version has upgraded microphones and a 1080p camera that should have more detail and less noise. And along with that, with this tough situation, with that window there, it should have better HDR as well. That 1080p webcam's larger sensor should also help in low light situations if you're in your house and your lights are dimmer, so you should have less noise compared to the M1 MacBook Air with its much older camera system. And now let's talk about the displays. I love the one on the M2. Now, yes, there is a notch. That does not bother me. It is worth the trade-off because we have this extra space here. So the menu bar isn't using any of that 16 by 10 display. You guys can see we have that large forehead there of wasted space. Now, with that, we have thinner bezels on the side and they're completely even all around. So it looks nice, we have a little bit more space. The M2 screen also gets brighter, 500 nits compared to 400 and it supports a billion colors compared to 16.7 million. That part's not a huge difference. You just get better uh, gradients and both these are DCI-P3. So if you care about having a great screen, the M2 is definitely better. And now let's get into real world performance. Now we're gonna start out with the SSDs. I'm a bit sick of this topic, but I think it is unethical just not to mention it. So these base models, the SSD with this one gets 1,372 right compared to 2,200 221 on the M1 model. As far as read speeds, we have 1,446 on the M2 compared to 2,910 on the older M1. So yes, it is more than twice as fast. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is transfer our folder of tests that we do with these systems and we'll see how that performs. We'll test using the same SSD and I'm gonna start our timer here. So the M2 MacBook Air took six minutes and 30 seconds to transfer this large folder full of files. And the M1 MacBook Air took three minutes and 26 seconds, being almost twice as fast. Now you can easily fix this SSD issue, but it's gonna cost you $200 to upgrade to the 512. And if you're somebody that does transfer files and you do different productivity tasks, any creative tasks, we would highly suggest to upgrade to that. But with the M1, if you don't care about the storage or you do external, even the base model will give you really fast speeds. Now, as far as snappiness and using it for regular things like web browsing, both are gonna be super, super fast. The M2 is updated, so it is gonna do a little bit better as far as you know this web-based uh, browser test, but in the real world, you're not gonna notice a difference. Both are insanely good. Now, a lot of coders love the MacBook Air because it is quick with this new Apple Silicon and it's affordable. So if you're a student coding, it is great. So let's go ahead and run our test project. As we're compiling, one thing is noticeable that the M2 heats up way faster we're already at 107, 108, which is a thermal limit. Here we're at 74, now hitting 77. The M1 stays much cooler. Now we've done the teardown, we saw that metal kind of foil piece that covered it up. And what somebody commented is that there is actually a little piece of black kind of tape that keeps heat in from going to the bottom case. Uh, whereas the M1, it had a solid block of metal 
with a section that goes out that is actually thicker. So the M2, because it's thinner, Apple changed the design. They have that little shielding, which we thought could be a vapor chamber. It is not, and it definitely heats up quicker. The M2 Air took two minutes and one second compared to two minutes and 29 seconds for the M1 MacBook Air. That gives us a difference of 18%, pretty much exactly what Apple showed off on stage. So even if the M2 runs hotter and throttles more, ultimately for coding, it is faster. Now, as far as music production with Logic, we ran our test right here. And previously, the M1 in the Pro would actually outperform the M2, it was a little bit more stable, it can handle more tracks. But this time with the Airs, we were able to handle 77 tracks on the M2 and 75 tracks for the M1. And as far as balancing the files is the same. So if you're expecting to get better music production with the M2, um, you are not gonna get that. It's gonna be about the same. And now let's talk about the graphics performance. This is one area where Apple really hit it hard during their event, but the base model M2 does have an A core, not the 10 core they showed off. And this MacBook Air has a seven core, it's a binned model, and this is the only one that they're selling now. So we are gonna be using Blender, we're not gonna run some kind of a benchmark, and we are going to render this classroom scene. Now as this is running, I'm noticing a couple things. First off, the M2 is clearly ahead with its eight core graphics compared to the seven core. As far as temps, they are really similar, but this task doesn't use all the capabilities of the GPUs, even though we are maxed out. So these do not heat up as much, which is a good thing if you're somebody that wants to do 3D rendering and animations. All right, guys, that is finished. And this is a pretty good difference. We have four minutes and 58 seconds for the M2 in six minutes and 24 seconds for the M1 with the seven core. That is a difference of 24%, which is definitely substantial. So when we don't have any thermal throttling with this task, that is great. And now for all of you guys that do photo editing out there, we're gonna test out Adobe Lightroom Classic. As far as actual editing, it's gonna be very similar as long as your SSD isn't full on the M2. Now this task does also use the graphics along with the CPU, it's been updated to be faster, let's go ahead and export 50 of these images and see what kind of difference we get. We're getting close to the end here and it looks like the M1 MacBook Air is actually beating it out. Um, now this uses the CPU and the GPU, all of that, which the M2 should be faster, but it could be those SSDs coming into play. The M1 did that in two minutes and nine seconds compared to two minutes and 16 for the M2. So if you're gonna be doing tasks that do push both the CPU and the GPU, RAM and SSD, that is where the M1 could be faster. And for you guys that wanna do some video editing, we have Final Cut opened up right here with a simple 4K project with a couple effects applied. This is what most people do, especially those buying an M1 MacBook Air. As far as playback, they're gonna be very similar. Uh, we're getting 72% GPU usage here compared to 70 over here. That means we have just a tiny bit more GPU power left over for effects on the M2. Not much at all though. I don't think that's gonna make a real world difference. Now let's go ahead and export this five minute project. Two minutes and 24 seconds for the M1, two minutes, 22 seconds for the M2. Now, both these can be good video editing machines if you're doing some light work like this. And if you're working on other tasks, let's say, for example, ProRes, raw footage for Blackmagic Raw or anything else, we will do some more in-depth testing in our comparison against the 14-inch MacBook Pro because we think that is the next step up that is actually worth it. Now, as far as battery life, Apple rates these the same, but the M2 does have some more power efficiency core. So if you are doing light work in real world mix tasks, you can actually get a little bit better battery life. But if you're going to be cranking up the brightness, if you're going to be hitting the performance hard, especially on the CPU, uh, then it should be about the same. So overall, what is my opinion? Well, I really like the M2 MacBook Air. I like the fact that it's MagSafe, the redesign, the screen, all those are really, really nice upgrades. And if you're going to keep the laptop for a long time, you might consider spending the extra money, but I would not buy it 
if you're trying to get it for extra performance of the M2 chip, real world results for regular use, it is extremely similar. So if you want to save some money and you pick up one of these for as low as 850 bucks or maybe even under 800 bucks refurbished, I would say use the links down in the description, save yourself some money. You will be very happy with this laptop. It was one of the best out there before. It is still an absolutely great laptop, especially for that low price point. But you guys let me know your thoughts down below. Click that circle above. Make sure you comment down below to subscribe to win one of these and check out those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.